there welcome to my channel my name is linda i've got a lot of fun diy home decor crafts for you today so what are we waiting for let's get started today we're going to be working on some rustic primitive fourth of july home decor we'll be focusing on using product from renebouquets.com before we get started on our project, let's see what Renee Bouquet product we're going to be using. So first up, I'm going to be using these set of two Stackable Heart ATC tags. We're going to be using Beautiful Words, Sweet as Honey. We'll be using Beautiful Words, Fearless. Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard, a set of three chain link frames. These are Beautiful Board Beautiful Bits, means they're tiny little bits. These are moon and stars all sorts of different moons and stars. And this Gaudy Girl Chunky Glitter Glass. It's German glitter glass. It's shard. The shade is diamond, and it's a very beautiful, vibrant glitter glass. With that said, let's move on to project number one. For this project, going to need some fabric here. I've cut two rectangles about 10 inches long, about 7 inches wide, and then one uh, square here, about 4 by 4 square. And what I've done is kind of distressed around the edges. Uh, and you just kind of come along the edge and you can kind of pull on the little strings and pull that off. And I did it for all three pieces here. All the fabric I'm using in uh, the projects today did come from Walmart. So once it's all distressed, it looks like this. Now on these projects, you can use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue or a glue gun. Of course, y'all know I'm going to take mine to the sewing machine. So first up, before we get started putting it together, I have made a little mixture here. And what I've got is some hot water and I'm using one packet of this instant coffee and then some ground cinnamon. Okay, and then I also forgot this is about an inch wide strip and about the length of the fabric cut. It was a yard of fabric, it's about 36 inches long. I just tore it, you know, an uh, inch wide and tore the fabric so it gets all you know, distress like that. So I'm taking a sponge paintbrush. I'm dipping it into this mixture here. And you can see how it's kind of got chunky cinnamon and stuff on it. Yes, I know I usually bring this out at Christmas, but I also like to use it when I'm doing this kind of rustic primitive work. You don't have to put the cinnamon in it. I just want those chunks of cinnamon. So I'm just painting around all the edges and everything like that. And my craft room smells really great right now as I walk in and I smell all the cinnamon. I'm adding it onto all three pieces and this one long strip and if you don't want another like long strip of fabric here you could use some ribbon uh whatever ribbon you want okay i just kind of am keeping it in the fabric mode once i get everything brushed on there i'll take my heat tool and i will use my heat tool to dry it you could just let it dry if you've got other things to do come back to it so what we're going to do first is get our little spot on here now you can use the glue gun or the beacon fabric tack of course get our little section on here and just glue it down totally i'm going to take mine to the sewing machine of course just sewing around the edges at first uh i didn't change my thread i left the thread on there and it's a white thread i'll show you that in a minute a little too white we'll fix it up and then i changed my thread later so this is what it looks like all sewn okay but you can see how white it is easy easy i'm just going to come in with a paintbrush and dip it in my mixture and i'm just going to go along on that thread and we're just going to kind of rustic it up a little bit adding a little bit more in the center it did the job right till i got the correct color of thread on there i'll show you here what it looks like you can see me using the heat tool to dry it up and so i know it all looks really dark when you put it on but once you let it dry and heat tool everything kind of lightens up a little bit right and i love this is how it looks so it kind of toned that white thread down a little bit so now we're going to put the two pieces together make sure it's wrong sides together which is basically the uh less bright sides together and so if you take your hot gl glue gun or your beacon fabric tackle all the way around the edges when you get to the last part leave about a little four inch opening here okay again taking mine to the sewing machine i'm going to go all the way around four sides when i get to the last side i'll leave that little uh four inch opening or so we just have to leave an opening to stuff it with some stuffing right going to make a little pillow out of this and you can leave all sorts of things out you don't have to distress the edges you don't even have to put any of the mixture on there you can leave the fabric in its entirety anything that you like your look will look great so here's what it looks like all sewn with the right correct thread and my little opening here 
And so I'll just come on in and bring in some stuffing and I'll stuff it as full as I want it. So, you know, if you don't like that rustic primitive look, don't paint the stuff on there. Not a big deal. You could just, it can still look just as cute without all that staining and distressing to it. Okay, so just take a little bit of time here to stuff a little bit on camera for you. And then once that's as full as I like it, of course, sewing or uh, hot gluing, whichever your preference, or Beacon Fabri-Tac, make sure you close that opening. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to use Dixie Bell chalk paint in the color drop cloth today. We're going to bring in those Renable Case stars. I'm going to use 13 stars for this one. You know, those of you here in the United States, USA, it uh, stands for the original 13 colonies. And then I have one more star that we're going to use on our tag. Um, I could have done 50 stars, yes, but my pillow is small don't have enough room. So I at least did 13. <laughs> so what I did is uh, the kind of dauber foam brush, I kind of pounce it on a pounce brush. So I get the texture and then using my heat tool here and I'm going to dry it. And then I'll repeat that process two or three times. So I get a nice kind of thick texture, as you can see right here, just gives a little bit something more. Okay. And then I'm going to repeat the process for the little, uh, ATC stackable heart tag here. I'll just go around the sides on the front and then, you know, off camera, I do the back. You don't see the back, but in case for some reason it got seen, at least it's, uh, you know, covered. And then heat set it in between just like I did the other one. Okay, I'm going to bring in some of this Distress Oxide. It's Tim Holtz Ranger Ink Vintage Photo. You can find this at any of the craft stores. Okay, and I'm going to bring in, I like also buy little packages of these kind of little finger uh, dauber things. It's got a little pouncy brush on it. You can see how I take it into the ink and then kind of pounce it around the corner of my stars just to give a little definition and add that little bit of distress around the stars. And that way when it sits on the fabric, it'll kind of pop them up just a little bit. And I just, the finger daubers are really easy to control. But yes, this ink can be found at any of the major craft stores. So I've cut a piece of paper to fit inside this ATC tag. I'll go ahead and sew it here in just a minute. I'm going to add just a little bit of ink around the edges of this as well. Front and back. You can see the back there is all done. And then I'm going to take my little sheet of paper to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew on it just like I did with the fabric. I'm not changing any settings or anything like that. My settings are at four. My tension set on four. It's just on a straight stitch using all polyester thread because my machine, the cotton, I don't know, it just doesn't like cotton thread, but cotton thread works fine. And then taking the open end of my scissor blades, I'm just kind of scraping along the edges to add a little texture there and then coming back in with the ink a little bit around the edges just to give it this nice little distress look okay then I'm going to come in I printed something off my uh, Cricut Explore 3 machine and I will make sure I have the list of the fonts in the description box for you and so I wanted this to you know it's old glory flag sacrifice honor and courage I wanted it to you know just kind of display what the flag means here okay so put that aside for a minute I glued that onto the tag now I'm coming in with that strip of fabric here's where you could put ribbon if you want just bringing it around and tying a nice little bow and then I'm gonna kind of open the fabric up a little bit and then I'm gonna just kind of set it where I want it all kind of wrinkly and stuff like that and then I'm going to glue that into place like that. I'm going to glue it kind of folded into place with all the little hills and valleys and things like that, just so it stays that way, of course, because I wanted to have that cute little, you know, primitive rustic texture there. And then we're going to come in and start gluing. Once that's all down, we're going to start gluing our stars into position. And I'm not choosing rhyme or reason where I put them. I have three large stars to start, and I'm just kind of in a triangular fashion there, more, you know, pleasing to the eye. And then I'll just come in with the next set size stars. In the set, you get, you know, multiple different size stars. You get some moons, and then you get those kind of outline stars as well, like I showed you earlier, just placing all uh, 13 of them on here. And you can do 50 stars if you want, if you did the tinier stars. <laughs> like the ones I'm putting on there, you could probably get all 50 on there. But I wanted some stars, of course, and just went, like I said, with the 13 because I knew that would fit at least. <laughs> I don't want to misrepresent here. Perfect. I love how this pillow turned out. 
absolute favorite. There that is all complete. And then we're going to come in with this little outline star from that kit. We're just going to kind of put it at the bottom of the tag. I like this here just to give it a little something, but it's not in your face. And then we'll go ahead and glue the tag down kind of right under that bow area. Just like that. And then I've got just some pit berries and some little rusty stars on a wire I get actually at Christmas time, but I use it all year round. I'm just kind of putting the two together and I'm going to add some Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here and just kind of tuck it up under that bow just to give a little texture up above there. And then I've got a rusty star here and a clothespin and I'm bringing in some of that uh, ink again just to kind of uh, stain that up a little bit. Figuring out where I want things to go, bringing in that rusty star. That way it kind of goes in with the rusty bells. And then this fearless word from Renee Bouquets, I'm going to clip that into that clothespin. I love it because I think all these words just kind of represent, you know, our you know, flag today and what it stands for and our military and what they stand for and the sacrifice that has been given and continues to be given daily. So I just love how all that fits together. And I'm coming in, you could skip this part too, but I'm coming in with just a little bit more cinnamon. I add more cinnamon to that mixture and just kind of adding some of that around the areas just to give a little more texture, a little bit more of that primitive look. Just painting that on with the paintbrush. I will use my heat tool to kind of set it and dry it. And then I'm going to come in. I'm just going to use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here and bring in some of that Gaudy Girl German Glitter Glass from Renee Bouquets. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on in a few areas here. I kind of just do like three areas. Odd number, right? Odd number when you're designing. And then once I get that in the place I want, I'll kind of just, I think I do it off camera, just kind of turn my pillow over, tap off the excess. Here it is. I do it on camera. And that makes this project complete. So let's move on to project number two. For this project, we're going to be making some stars here. I have two pieces of fabric for each star. All of these fabric choices can be found at Walmart. You can do different colors like I did, uh, you know, or the same color, doesn't matter. I chose this for my pattern. You can draw it out, print something out from the computer, anything like that. And of course, as with the last project, you can use Beacon Fabric Tat Glue or the hot glue gun. No laughing at how my hot glue gun looks. <laughs> I'll hear you. Um, or the sewing machine, of course. If you're gluing, you're going to glue all the way around on your star, leaving one side opening because we need to be able to stuff our star, of course. I'm going to just show you one star here, and then I'll do the others off camera because it's all the same process. Of course, as you can see here, I'm sewing around all my edges of my star. Yeah, you could choose any colors you want. I chose one that all had blue in each of the patterns, so it kind of went together. You can see I left one side open here, almost like a side and a half, and then I realized that's too much, so I went back and kind of sewed up that other little half side, so one side is sufficient. Once that's done, I'm going to take the open end of my scissor blades, as you see here. I'm going to scrape along the edges to get that distressed look. It works really nice with these fabrics, perfectly easy. I distressed all but the side that, you know, I hadn't sewn yet because it was kind of a little hard to hold it together. Got what we want here. And then I'm going to come in and stuff each star, of course. Now, in the end, once my stars were stuffed and sewn, I realized they were too stuffed. I went with it and left it, but you may want to stuff it a little bit less because it does get quite bulky, but it's cute either way. So here it is already course stuffed you want to go ahead and glue your opening if you are a gluer and of course I'm taking mine to the sewing machine and closing that opening 
perfectly wonderful. And then once I get that closed, I'll come in with that last little side and kind of distress it out a little bit. And then, like I said, I'm going to do the same on all three stars. So here they are all ready to go, looking super cute like that. But y'all know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to bring back that cinnamon instant coffee water mixture. Again, just some hot water to start out. Add that instant coffee to it so it melts it nicely with that hot water. Add your cinnamon to it or don't add cinnamon. But I'm also going to bring in this Distress Oxide ink again, just like on the first uh, project. You can elect to use one or the other or both. You can see how this ink just distresses it up nicely. And again, you can find these inks at any craft supply store. Renee Bouquets does carry a few inks, but she's just really limited on supply and unfortunately doesn't have this color in stock. Um, and there's a difference if you go to the store, you might, you're might you going to see Distress Ink and then you're going to see Distress Oxide Ink. And the Oxide Ink means just when this uh, ink dries, it kind of has more of a chalky appearance versus the Distress Ink. So... Again, you can use one, both, or all. You can see how the ink just looks nicely here by itself, but you know, I like that cinnamon mixture because I kind of like the chunkiness of the cinnamon on it. So you choose how you want to do it. Get all three of your stars, distress how you want, or don't distress them at all. Leave them perfectly plain. It would look really, really cute. Once I get all this on here, I'm going to uh, kind of set it to dry a little bit. I will use my heat tool eventually. I have a couple strips of uh, cheesecloth here. You can find it in the kitchen section at like Walmart. You could use the wet mixture on this, but I'm going to just bring in this vintage photo ink again. And I'm going to ink it with the uh, cheesecloth, you know, kind of together. And then I'm going to open it up and ink it stretched out that way it'll get like different variations through the cheesecloth okay i'm gonna set that aside and i'm gonna come in with some twine here i'm gonna use twine because i know it's thicker and it won't break and a long doll needle needles don't have to be this long but walmart does carry a three pack of different lengths of kind of these doll needles i'm gonna take one end i'm gonna kind of make a little loop and add a knot to it so it's kind of like a double knotted loop there I guess you could say and I'll cut off that excess once I pull it through the center of the first star and I'm gonna grab another star and pull it through the center of that star all the way through and again through the last star in the center and then once I got this far I'm kind of pulling it nice and tightly you can see how indented it is on the bottom again this is where you might want a little less full star and I'm holding on to the twine on the other side and I'm bringing the needle through kind of the center of that area and then I'm gonna pull the needle out okay and then I'm gonna grab both pieces of my twine here the one long piece that came out the needle and the other piece that's uh, in a loop because I didn't pull it all the way through and I'm gonna use those two pieces to kind of pull it tight and knot it together so it's a nice strong uh, knot here and then cut off the excess okay I know it looks funny so full, but we'll make it cute. And then once everything's dry, I've done, used my heat tool on it, got everything ready to go. I'm going to bring in this cheesecloth. You really probably only need one piece, but I kind of use like one piece and like six, eight inches off another piece. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to kind of center that cheesecloth. I want it mine open a little bit. I don't want it tight. You know, I want the be able to see the whole cheesecloth. Once I get it where I like it, I'll just tie a little knot there. And then I'm gonna come in with my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here and kind of glue it so it stays in that open position. You could bunch it all up and have it wrinkly crinkly around it if that's the way you like it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue it along the sides as well because when you have it open like that, it'll tend to wanna just kind of bunch back together and I want mine to stay open, right? One last side here, get that glued in. Super cute, I like it. And then I'm gonna come in and bring in this uh, Renee Bouquet Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard. I think it's the middle frame of the uh, set of three chain link frames. All the Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard from Renee Bouquet's is like the thickness of a nickel, so it's real sturdy like wood, okay? So I've glued that little knot down in the center, and now I'm coming in in just some inconspicuous places that I know will be covered up, and I'm kind of just gluing down that chain link frame. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to bring in the Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth again, like we did the first project, same shade, and this Yankee Blue from Dixie Belle and what I'm going to do is the same procedure like I did in the first one, taking a pouncy brush and I'm pouncing it on 
This little heart is like a wood heart from my own supply. The sweet, of course, is from that sweet as honey from Renee Bouquet's. And the star, pouncing it on, he set it in between, and I'll do two or three layers of that. Here comes the heat set, just so you can see I'm doing it. I'm not lying. <laughs> Once that's done, I've got these two beads. I put them on a skewer for easier painting, and I'll come in with that Yankee blue, and I will do a couple of coats on that. And I even take a little sandpaper off camera once it's dry and just kind of distress those beads up just a tiny bit in the center. Once those are done, I remembered, oh my gosh, I didn't paint the chain link frame. So <laughs> I'm coming in uh, and just stuck a little piece of paper under it and going very gently around some areas that I've glued that I can't get paper underneath it <laughs> and coming in with that uh, pouncy brush and making sure I get a couple of layers on that as well so it matches. So don't freak out. I'm cutting off the tail of one of my ends on the cheesecloth and then I'm going to glue that little piece down because I knotted it a little unevenly and I wanted a little longer piece so if you'll remember at the beginning I said you need like a you know a piece of cheesecloth and then like an extra little eight inches <laughs> this is my little eight inches and I'm just gluing that around that area I cut and now you can't even tell and it's going to get covered up anyway anyway now that it's the length I want I'm coming in and just kind of arranging my tails the way I want them to be and all crinkly and wrinkly and gluing them down just like I did that ribbon on our flag in the first project so that they stay in position and have that cute detailing like I want it down and then kind of onto the side of our stars here and then I'm going to come in with that sweet word it's all painted up and I have a little wood home word here I got from Walmart in their craft section and I'm gluing the sweet word to the home wood word so it says sweet home and then with the star that we just painted up I'm going to add that to it as well and here's what it looks like now I'm going to bring in some crafter square uh, variegated twine here. I've got it tied into a bow with some really long tails. I'm going to add a couple of the uh, outlined Rene Bouquet stars, a couple of red beads from my supply, already painted red because they came out at Christmas time. <laughs> and then I'm going to bring in those blue beads that we just got done painted and distressed a little bit. I'm not going to tie a knot yet because I don't know how long I needed them. Set that aside. Here's what it looks like perfectly cute. And then I'm going to bring in another clothespin for this project. Use the ink and distress it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring in, I've got another little, uh, this is kind of pit berries and rusty bells together. And I've got a little piece of burlap trim here. I get this roll of burlap trim at Walmart and I'm just going to peel off some of the, uh, twine pieces off here that's where I cut my piece off. And it also has kind of this sewn edge. So the thing, you know, burlap doesn't fall apart. I saved that. I'm going to use it for this just to give it some texture and then just a little piece of ribbon for my supply. So I'm going to put all those together, kind of crinkle them in the center, add that little clothespin there. I'm going to use a little uh, glue here so that when I clamp that on, it'll just glue it all together and make it hold so it doesn't fall apart. I'll go ahead and glue in the uh, pit berry, bells and pit berries underneath that little knot. And then I will go ahead and glue down our little ensemble here with all its wonderful texture right over that knot. And then I'm going to take the little wood heart we painted. I'm going to tuck it right down in there all around that center knot. Imagine that. And then I'm going to take our little Sweet Home Star Ensemble, add some glue in the places I know it's going to stick. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that down as well. Perfectly cute. And then here comes our little twine bow. Figuring out the length I need, I'm going to just go ahead and tie off the end here. I'm checking the bead, and yep, that bead's got a really large hole there. So I'm going to kind of double knot it, do both ends, cut off the excess. It's going to look really cute. Yeah, definitely know, let me know what you think about this star uh ensemble piece here. I'm going to glue down the twine bow to the center of the paper clip, of course, and then I'm going to go ahead and just add little dots of glue here and there, and I'm going to glue the tails of my uh, twine bow in place because I don't want it to just flop everywhere. I want to be able to see it, so I glue all that in place, and I even once I get down to where the beads are, I'm going to glue those kind of down in place onto the next star just so everything stays where I want it. I'm going to bring in a little bit more of our little cinnamon mixture here. 
more so the cinnamon, but you kind of got to dip it into the wet part of the mixture so, you know, the cinnamon stays, of course. And then just like on the first project, I'm going to bring in Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here, and I'm going to sprinkle on the glitter glass that's got a little bit of cinnamon in there by accident, because when I wiped off the excess off my craft table into this little cup, some cinnamon came in with it. But just a few areas there. It's a little uh, designer trick. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Once I get those few areas there done, I will tap off the excess, and that makes this project complete. So I hope you like the projects that I came up with today using product from Renee Bouquets. I will have the links to all the product I use on both of these projects in my description box for you in case you need to run over and get something for yourself. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which one of these projects you want to make because I'm curious. The flag is my favorite. I do like the stars, but I kind of go back and forth on whether I do like the stars, <laughs> but I love the flag. Anyway, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you wandered in here, it's your first time, you're checking things out, you're digging what you saw, before you click off, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. And before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. There are times in our lives we find we only have time for one word of a prayer. Jesus. You may not have time to figure out how to word the prayer, how to ask for it, just the name of Jesus is all you can get out, and really, this is all the power you need. He knows of your desperate need for the situation. Do not fear that he isn't listening or doesn't care about the situation, or that if you don't have time to get out a fully worded prayer that he won't listen. Jesus can orchestrate things, and he intervenes on your behalf. Believe that he alone will guide your steps on that narrow ledge and keep you from falling. Do you believe that he will walk those steps with you and bring you out the other side? Or do you believe that there is no way of getting through this? No matter what we face, you must know that Jesus is able. We hear it all the time. We know it. But do we truly live it? Do we truly recognize his power in every situation of our lives? Do we truly believe that the name of Jesus saves? Like deep down in your core, do you truly believe he can handle it for you. Don't let any unbelief cripple the hope you are waiting for. I promise he knows what is happening. He knows what needs to be done. He is the great I am. His presence is unstoppable. His power is your healing grace. Unbelief can halt a miraculous power, but trusting in Jesus can release that power into any circumstance you are facing. Choose to leave your doubts far behind you don't cling to them. Instead, choose to cling to Jesus. He will restore, support, and strengthen you and place you on his firm foundation. Today is the day. Release all your doubts and fears for whatever situation you're facing. Embrace your faith and whisper his name, Jesus. I thank you for sharing your time with me. And I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.